Good morning. Since you're all quiet, I'm going to take the opportunity to get us started. Those of you who may still be looking for seats, there's 12 empty seats right here in the front. So, you know, Joe and Paula have prizes for people who sit here in front. I'd like to welcome you to our uh, WIOA Ready, Set, Go conference. I am Janet Bloomfield with the Michigan Works Association. Um, many of you have have know me either from a WIOA orientation or from a previous life with the association. I have recently returned to the association after 14 years uh, in a local MWA. So I'm very excited to be back to the association, very excited to see you today. I have a couple of housekeeping items that I'd like to go through. They hand me this piece of paper and I said to them, I can't read this piece of paper. They said, oh yeah, you can. So here goes. <clears throat> Mind you, I didn't write this piece of paper. So on behalf of the Michigan Works Association, we'd like to welcome you to the WIOA Ready, Set, Go conference. Uh, the association is fortunate to have in-house policy expertise. That would be me. Uh, and to have a great partnership with the Workforce Development Agency and other partners that allow us to bring you this valuable information. You were provided in your packet a, an evaluation form, and it's just lines. We would encourage you to use that form that if you have a question at the end of a session or during a session that didn't get answered, please identify that there so we can, we will be collecting this information uh, at the end of the second session so that we can use it to um, identify what additional training needs to happen. Also, you, will receive, you received a needs assessment. So if you could also make sure that you complete that, we'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps us to identify what you would find valuable and where your needs are at. Uh, the, uh, first of all, let me ask a question. Did anybody not receive the um, link for the handouts? Oh, this is promising. Oh, did I see a hand over here? Okay, tomorrow we will send out the link again. We will be uploading the handouts for the financial reporting workshop and there is a uh, workshop this afternoon that they will they wanted to start with a few surprises so we will upload those and you'll have access to all of those materials uh, tomorrow so if you did not get that link look for that email tomorrow and if you um, if there is a problem with you getting it please make sure that you contact the association we will follow up on that for you The other thing, um, I want to let you know that uh, lunch will be served at 1145. Joe and Paula will really kind of manage the time in here in regards to when they think you may need a break, when they may need a break, uh, whatever the case may be. Um, but we will be breaking at 1145 and lunch will be served beyond the gaming floor. Not on the gaming floor, but beyond the gaming floor. So. Um, Please join us there at 1145 and then at the end of the second round of workshops we will be asking you to recycle your name badge and in, in your little lanyard thank you the little string that goes around your neck um, and so there will be boxes in the back of the room to do that so please um, help me welcome both Paul, Paula and Joe for this session we are very excited for the information that they have to share with us thank you Thanks, Janet. Um, I didn't realize I had a recycled lanyard, or a used lanyard. I would have dry cleaned it first, I think, before using it, but no. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for, uh, for attending our workshop today about WIOA and the Osmus changes um, related to WIOA. We hope we give you a lot of uh, uh, useful information today. Um, I think it's going to, uh, to be exciting, uh, at least to me, the changes in our data system that we're putting into place for the new WIOA program um, are great improvements over the way that, that WIA has functioned NASMIS uh, up to this point. So I think, you, uh, I think you'll find them helpful, and hopefully you'll find them as exciting as we do. Okay. First thing is to figure out how the pointer works, I guess. Okay, um, we've got a lot of information uh, for you today. 
Uh, we know that the handouts were pretty lengthy, already been chastised once as far as how many slides that, that we have. Um, so we're going to go through things. I do want to encourage you to ask questions as we go along. Um, in addition to the presentation, there was a, a, a package of, of other reference handouts that I think most of you received as you, as you came in. If anyone didn't receive this package of, of handouts, different tables, if you'd raise your hand, we'll make sure that someone comes around and, and gets them to you. Figured Mike would be the one that <laughs> he comes and sits way up here in the front and, and doesn't get the right hand out. Okay, so we're going to go over a number of things uh, today. Um, we're just very briefly going to go over some background about the uh, uh, WIOA Act or Workforce Investment Opportunity Act. Um, slight overview of, of, uh, of I guess the history of that act, but we'll be talking about um, the transition of, of WIA participants. What's going to happen with them come July 1st, especially from the, the data system perspective uh, for someone who's been in WIA and now is in WIOA. We'll talk about really uh, three different categories of those participants as you'll see, uh, see them in the data system, and that's really specifically related to the data system. And then we're going to go over a number of different system um, changes, uh, how you can uh, look at people in the data system as to whether they're a WIA participant or a WIOA participant, and then a lot of the different changes that we have in, in store for you regarding um, the, the different applications in OSMIS uh, for WIOA, everything from the funding, or excuse me, registration screen all the way through the, the outcome screen. Um, we'll be talking about those changes and what they're going to look like and how they're going to work uh, within the, the one stop. We'll talk a little bit about uh, youth and what it means for uh, someone to be an in-school or out-of-school youth and how that eligibility is going to work. And we'll, we'll also talk about um, some basic uh, Osmos features that have been improved with the, uh, with the uh, implementation of, of WIOA. And lastly, we'll finish up by talking about performance measures, um, giving you a little bit about definitions of performance measures, some information on um, the, the periods of performance, who's going to be in program year 15 performance, who's going to be in program year 16 performance, what it means for uh, someone who serves exclusively under WIOA or WIA, et cetera. So we'll talk, uh, we'll talk um, quite a bit about the performance as well. Okay. All right, as far as the background on WIOA, um, this was signed into law in July of, of 2014. Uh, WIOA was intended to, uh, uh, to replace, I guess, the, uh, uh, the Workforce Investment Act. Um, Workforce Investment Act, as far as my experience has been, since early 2000s, they've been talking about reauthorizing that. Um, year after year, they said, okay, it's, we're gonna reauthorize WIA into something else. Uh, so it was not a surprise, I, I guess, that they finally got around to it, but it was a bit um, um, of a surprise to see them actually get the legislation in place, get it through both houses, get it signed uh, in 2014. The Workforce uh, Innovation and Opportunity Act, um, again, replaces WIA for, from our perspective. And where WIA had more of a, I guess, uh, a single purpose as far as uh, helping that job seeker by increasing employment, uh, in increasing their employment retention and earnings. WIOA is more of a, um, a program that, that spans across different core programs. Um, as you know, we have the core programs of the adult, uh, dislocated worker youth, as well as the um, adult education, Wagner Pizer, and the vocational rehabilitation programs. I think WIOA and its intention was to increase the access to services uh, and the, um, the effectiveness of those services by aligning the different systems. You know, we have a, uh, um, a plan that has to incorporate um, um, all of the different core programs. Um, so it's not looking at just one program such as adult, it's how can the system serve people uh, more efficiently. And just as a timeline, a couple things we'll be talking about today. As I mentioned, in July 2014, uh, WIO was, was signed. Um, for 
most of our programs here in Title I, um, they don't become effective until July 1st of 2015. Although I understand from the vocational rehabilitation side, um, they've actually been functioning under WIOA since July of 2014. Then as far as performance reporting, that doesn't take, a, um, uh, that doesn't take effect for the new WIOA measures until July of 2016. And as I mentioned, when we talk a little bit about performance later, um, we'll talk about the different performance periods and who is included in which measure and um, really how that can be determined, at least from the way that we understand things right now. Okay, as far as transitioning of participants, um, under WIOA, anyone who is active uh, in the, um, the program as of basically June 30th, July 1st of 2015, automatically is grandfathered in to WIOA. So if you have a WIOA participant and they are still active on July 1st, um, they're basically going to become uh, a WIOA participant. From what I've been told, this is different than the way JTPA functioned, where you had to exit everyone from JTPA and then re-enroll them in the, the WIA program uh, way back when that occurred. With WIOA, these people are automatically um, grandfathered in. So the, those carryover participants, as we're going to refer to them today, don't have to go through, um, through eligibility again. And as such, you'll see some different Osmus screens uh, for those carryover participants than you'll see for, uh, for a WIOA participant that's registered after July 1st. But just to give you some idea, right now we've got uh, a fair number of people who are still active in WIA. I think this is maybe um, an opportunity for you to look at your active participants. I think many MWAs uh, do a, a very good job of keeping up on, on uh, the participants that they're working with, making sure that they're still receiving services, et cetera. But I think even the, uh, even the best intentions, you still kind of lose track of some participants. I know in our data system, we have some people that were registered years and years ago. And, um, and I think you should be taking a look at those uh, on a continual basis to make sure that, that they are still being served, uh, determining whether or not their services should be ended so that they can exit from the system. But under the transition from WIA to WIOA, you may, may want to take this opportunity to relook at those people um, to see whether or not they are still being served and should be transitioned into WIOA. Of course, you need to keep in mind um, at any point how this might affect performance if you're exiting people. Um, those people do uh, fall into performance when they're exited, so you need to be careful about, uh, about exiting your people uh, that are maybe no longer being actively served uh, because they will impact performance. We're going to talk about really three different groups of, of OSMIS uh, records or OSMIS participants uh, today. And we've kind of split them up into these categories because um, you'll see different OSMIS screens depending on which category the person falls into. Um, and this is really related to what you'll see in OSMIS. It's not so much what, um, what performance measures they're going to fall into. Because, uh, again, as we talk about performance later and the performance periods and cohorts, you'll see that, that uh, there is an overlap between what we consider to be a, a WIA participant and a WIOA participant. First category is what we're going to call our legacy WIA people. These are people who begin their participation and end their participation prior to WIOA ever beginning. So they're registered before. Uh, June 30th of 2015 and they exit before June 30th of 2015. So if you've got somebody that has been active for a while and you now exit them in, in June of 15, we're going to consider that person to be a, a legacy WIA uh, participant from the standpoint of you'll see a certain look to the screens in Osmus for those people. Then we really have uh, two different types of WIOA participants. We have our uh, WIOA carry-in, and that's more or less anyone that began in the WIA program and is still active on July 1st. Uh, we're going to, uh, really that person becomes a WIOA participant, and you'll see certain screens in Osmus based on, on that, um, 
that person's uh, participation period. And then lastly, the group that we're calling our Pure WIOA, and we hope this doesn't uh, cause problems with the Pure Michigan people, because I know they got that trademarked. Our Pure WIOA people are anyone that begins participation um, on or after July 1st of, of this year. So they're completely registered during WIOA. Yeah, Bernice. Yes, some screens will look different. Most of them, yes. Yep. Okay, and this table just kind of uh, uh, reinforces um, those time periods. This is one of your handouts. And um, the, the category is the different um, groups that I talked about. And as far as the program, that's really who we consider them to be as far as uh, within the program of Osmus. This is just kind of a uh, uh, graphical representation of that. If you had somebody who was registered in November of 14 and then exited June of 15, that's what we're going to consider to be that legacy uh, WIA person. So their entire participation was before WIOA began. And similarly, the WIOA carry-in and the pure WIOA are people who at some point were uh, still active on or after July 1st of 2015. 